I had to uh, send a, a quick um, text to my daughter. She's a senior at OU, at, uh, OU to let her know I'm over here at Ohio State. She's like, oh, no. That's okay. I actually went to Kentucky, so I have no allegiances <laughs> in the state. But I'm really happy to be talking to you guys tonight about just social media and how that connects to our brand. So what I'm going to start with is just a little bit of some facts around White Castle, just so you can kind of get to know us. Yeah, there we go. So our, uh, our vision from, you know, a lot of companies, right, have vision and mission statements. So you'll kind of see that as we go through here. So feed the souls of Craver generations everywhere. And we think the, uh, the posts here that we actually have been both from social media. So everything you're going to see here tonight really comes from our, our social media platforms, kind of from a born to crave to generations of this is a grandmother who was inducted into our Cravers Hall of Fame by her granddaughter out of Cincinnati. So we love the fact that our brand really spans generations. And considering we are the first hamburger chain, how many people knew that? Since 1921, we're going to be 95 years young next year. So that's quite Quite an accomplishment when you think about the number of restaurants that go out of business uh, every year, the fact that we've maintained for that long. We were founded uh, in Kansas, in Wichita, by Billy Ingram, and we're still family owned and operated today. So if anybody's ever seen our building over there on Goodale, that's, uh, we've been there since 1934, and our current president actually is Lisa Ingram, who's the great granddaughter of um, Billy Ingram. So we're still family owned and we've never franchised, which is why we only have 400 restaurants. Because People say, come here, come here. Why aren't you here? Why aren't you in Florida? Uh, we grow slower because we actually uh, invest um, in our own growth and we don't franchise. So our mission is to create memorable moments every day. And this is really relevant from a social space because now that we have social platforms that people can share their moments, it's even more relevant for us. It actually gives cravers a way to connect, to see each other in social media. Uh, one of the things about our brand uh, becomes a first. So when people go to White Castle for the first time, they like to document it. This happened to be two kids. I don't, I'm not quite sure if you can see in the back, so I'll read it, uh, where it must have been a, a parent that posted SoCal boys eating White Castle for the first time. And then our social community manager says, uh-oh, now they won't want to leave. We apologize in advance. So it's really fun to engage with our cravers in the social space. And you're going to see more examples as we, as we go along. So Valentine's Day is another very social occasion. We've been doing, uh, have anybody heard of doing White Castle Valentine's dinners? <laughs> it is a hoot. It is so much fun to go. Uh, some people will give us grief for it or give, you know, like, what do you mean you would take your date to White Castle on Valentine's Day? Well, we do it up with tableside service uh, and decorate the tables and have a special menu. And there are people that have been coming to us for, for decades doing this. So we get a lot of publicity out of this in addition to the social sharing that goes on. Uh, and we create ways. Uh, one year we actually had... Um, you know, every, all the pictures get shared on our website. So everything we do around food is fun uh, and becomes kind of a sharing and a memorable moment. That's what we try to convey with the brand. Uh, also, about 27 years ago, our family, uh, the Ingrams, decided that all these people were saying, why can't I get you in Florida? Why can't I get you in California? And at the same, they would bring Crave cases full, like on airplanes, you know, to their relatives whenever they would travel across country. Well, there was this little um, new invention called the microwave back then that was coming about. And our president at the time said, you know, there might be something to this thing with microwave food. So I believe, I, we haven't documented it, but we may be one of the first chains or branded names to ever go into the frozen category. Of course, now you can find TGI Fridays and all these others, but we're kind of coast to coast when it comes to our, our retail products. One time I was in California running a car, and uh, the people out there, when they saw on your you know, credit card that the company gives you, and they're like, is that really a place? Because they didn't, you know, they've been back east, so sometimes they think of it just from the Harold Kumar movie and thought it was made up. It's like, yeah, they're really, they're really our restaurants. It really does exist. <laughs> so 
social engagement. Uh, when social media came about, we, we jumped right in very early on, at least from a Facebook standpoint. Uh, we, you know, people love our trivia. So Throwback Thursday was perfect for White Castle. Uh, to talk about, you know, our social community manager. We have a, our advertising agency. And then on staff at White Castle, we have a digital marketing manager. So they kind of manage all the social monitoring and engagement. A lot of the things are pre-planned, but most of what we actually have out there on our social platforms um, are um, just through what people post. And then we re-engage with that and share that. So it's just fun example of these guys who posted something and we come back in and it's like, you know, we hope you buckled that crave case in before you drove off at Zachary, you know, safety first boys kinds of things. So we like to have fun. You can see our tone in our voice is very much about fun and memorable moments. Uh, and so why sharing and fun are pretty much synonymous with mealtime. So it's perfect for the food business for us to just leverage that. Uh, millennials rarely eat alone, as you all know. Uh, and, a and spend a disproportionate amount when they dine out with friends. 47% uh, access social media while eating, 19% tweet and update their status while eating out. That's a year old, so I'm sure that has grown by this point. Uh, and eating in the presence of friends actually increases check and increases intake. So from a food and a restaurant standpoint, it's good to be social because people are happy, they're spending. So we like that in the business. So some other Craver-generated content. We really are very fortunate as a brand that a lot of, I'll call them kind of celebrity or personalities like to talk about White Castle. So we really, we never have paid for endorsements from that standpoint. There are brands that will go out there and get YouTube endorsers or Facebook endorsers to talk about their brand. We've been fortunate to not have to do that. This happens to be one of the real housewives of New Jersey. Don't watch the program, but... Uh, <laughs> Lauren, I guess, really stopped in. We found out about this before it aired because we saw the post. She was actually on her way to the wedding, uh, stopping in. And then I think about a month later, the program actually aired. Uh, and then here's some other examples. Tori Kelly, one of, who's a singer, uh, talking about, you know, when your bus doesn't get through the drive through at White Castle and we were quick to respond with well, our rides a little on the large sides too, which helps us then promote our Crave Mobile simultaneously. Uh, Chrissy Teigen, she's talked about White Castle a couple times, actually, in some of the magazine articles that she's done. So we're, we follow her, and she was at something in Fashion Week in New York talking about champagne, and she's like, but where's the sliders? So we jumped in with the, or the VMAs, that's what it was, uh, VMA after party. So many of you have probably seen or at least heard of the movie. Uh, I think somebody had submitted a question around Harold and Kamar, so a little backstory to that were the screenwriters are two guys from New Jersey who grew up on White Castle. We have a lot of restaurants, a lot of castles in New Jersey, and came to us with this script and said, can we use White Castle you know, as, a part of our, as a part of our movie? And we'd never really, we've never endorsed that kind of behavior. We've always been there. Whatever your craving is, we are open to satisfy it. We understand cravings, whether it's running out for ice cream like at Jenny's or Grater's. We get that. We, we love that people have cravings, and we're fine to be there to satisfy them. Uh, so this was a very calculated risk for us to actually say yes. So we did not put any money into this. I think at some point we you know, certainly uh, helped them with some food and provided one of our castles for some filming. A lot of the filming was done in Canada. Uh, and at the time, um, I think Cal Penn was a vegetarian, so he actually never ate any White Castles during the movie. So very interesting uh, fact. So we allowed it to go about. Our president at the time, who was Bill Ingram, you know, you can imagine walking in to a very conservative gentleman and saying, well, we've got this script for a movie that they want to do. It includes sex, drugs, uh, some other just kind of behavior that we really wouldn't support. And his only question was, does it do anything disparaging to our team members or to our brand in any way? And he said, absolutely not. As a matter of fact, it kind of, you know, honors <laughs> uh, the castle. Uh, and the team members are, are put in a very good light. There will be no fun made of them when they are actually filming, you know, using, our, uh, using actors as employees. 
And so he said, yeah, let's, let's do it. So 11 years later, we still get every year on the anniversary of Carolyn Kumar, we get uh, talked about in social media. And, and poor Cal Penn and John Cho, every time they are mentioned for anything, whether they're doing a new pilot on TV, it always talks about them as of, you know, White Castle, Harold and Margot to White Castle. So we just had a little fun here recently, too, with another movie. So we have um, sports players. Russell Wilson coming into Cincinnati talked about how he couldn't wait to come back to and try white, and get his White Castle fix on. So even in social media, then extends to other press, and the press picks it up. So ESPN Magazine, um, publications in Cincinnati. I'm going to go a little quick here, so I'm good on time. Um, you know, leveraging trending hashtags is the other thing. And it's not always just silly or clever or funny. A Veterans Day was something that, when you talk about the generations of cravers that have come to White Castle, was much more about a commemorative moment. So there's sincere things that you can do in social media. It doesn't always have to be a funny aspect, too. Um, some of the, we got in the middle of the Meek and uh, Drake thing and got picked up in the news by, and then of course, college in five words. Some of you can maybe. Uh, it was great when Time Magazine a year ago named us as the most influential burger of all time. Needless to say, we leveraged that. So I'm going to just real quick give you an example, though, of how we use social media when we launched a product and how there was an outcome because of that. So of all things, we launched a veggie slider, right? The 100% burger slider place we have been built upon, and we launched a veggie slider with Dr. Preggers, a very good brand. So we sent out press kits, invitations to try it. These guys are from NPR Radio. We invited people, you know, share. And so you have to be prepared for the, the good and the not so good comments. And that's OK in social media, because we were prepared with every question that would occur. So as you plan ahead, these were some of the not so great things. One media picked up on the fact about the calories. Well, we really weren't talking so much about the calories. A White Castle is 140 calories. This happened to be 150 with Thai sauce on it, and they made a big deal out of it, right? So that's how the media might spin a headline in a way that's unflattering. And of course, it then begged the question, and we knew this was coming, well, is the White Castle slider? I mean, is, the, is it all vegan? And it wasn't. We had an animal uh, byproduct as a very small ingredient in our bun. So through the social listening, we actually were ready and prepared with, question, with answers when people said, well, is it vegan and why isn't it? And, we got blasted uh, from some groups to say, you know, how dare you add a veggie slider to a fast food place? You know, those were kind of the highbrow vegans. And you have other, had other people from White Castle who were cravers saying, don't even go there. You know, why are you adding a veggie slider to your lineup? So we were ready and prepared with all those answers ahead of time. So you just had to be very transparent and forthcoming with the questions and the answers. Um, customers actually continue to be ongoing thankful, like for people who changed their diet, maybe ate less meat or gave up meat, were now coming in and said, don't remove it. So, and this was all through social media. So, and we announced in March that we were going to keep it on permanently. And again, it just got everybody talking and thankful. Uh, and then in October, we actually had already modified the bun. So based on the comments that were coming in social media, we went back to our bakeries because we make our own buns to say, how can we adjust this so we can satisfy um, the vegans that are looking for a vegan bun? And we did as of October. So who would have thought White Castle gets a PETA recognition for our, uh, for our veggie slider? Last month, when they came out with this award, they were actually at our castles handing out veggie sliders to people on the street. So you know, it goes to show you what social media can do to maybe help transform. Uh, and we, we listened and kind of answered it for that.